Welcome guys, it's freezing outside, so let's sit and have a nice conversation. X-Team Car Center made this video possible, so big thanks to them and I hope that we will continue to cooperate in future. Uh, today I'm testing 2007 Nissan Navara. It is the second generation Navara. First generation came out in 1997 and it was produced for seven years until 2004. From 2004 to, 2000, to 2014 this was produced and in 2010 Nissan uh, did a facelift of this model and from 2014 to this day it's a third gener generation that is in production. About two months ago I had the opportunity to drive and test the Isuzu BMX 2017 and uh, I, that was uh, my first experience with this kind of vehicle and now I can compare them and uh, get a better uh, opinion about this car. So today I'm not going to talk generally about pickup trucks. You can check that out in my previous video with D-Max and I'll link it below. So on the front of the car we don't have anything special uh, except this aftermarket front bumper and these headlight washers. Everything is basic and same like in the old cars. The Rabonet is 2.5 liter DCI engine. It is a turbocharged diesel engine that produces about 170 horsepower and uh, uh, produces about 300 power foot of torque. And it delivers that power to the wheels in best possible way. Every time you push the accelerator pedal you feel that push and the power is there every time you need it. On the side we have nice large mirrors with implemented hazard lights and additional light for the ground. So you can see if there are some obstacles when you are approaching the car at night. What's also interesting that the window in the back door is divided in two pieces. Only the bigger one can be folded out. And I thought this is very stupid, but then I realized if you are driving celebrity in the back of your Navara, uh, they can open the back window fully and still be invisible for the paparazzos. Great job Nissan. Now let's talk about the back of the car. Let's start with the cover of the cargo area. Believe me, this is the single most stupidest thing in the world. And now I'm going to explain you. First, the visibility is terrible. Only thing you can see through this is the large building or a car that is three miles away from you. Second thing why is this stupid is it is very hard to open. Kids or smaller people can't even open it. And when you open it, it doesn't leave you much space to throw some stuff or a tailgate if you want to. So it's stupid. Only good thing about this cover is that this window can be opened. But this much, so it's useless and stupid. Here are the tethering points and they are movable. You can mount them anywhere on these mounts, even here on the ground, so it's great for transporting. These plastics over the rear bumper I really like and they are making this bumper really useful. You can step on them and throw some stuff into the cargo area. Let's start with the interior. Let's begin with the seats. The front seat is really comfortable and you can separately adjust the height of the front or the rear part of the seat. Did I mention that this looks ugly and it's stupid? The back seats are terrible. The seating position is terrible because the f seat is too close to the floor. So you don't have enough legroom. Headroom is decent but that doesn't make a, this position any better. So, I'm guessing you're never going to drive any celebrity in the back of your Nissan Navara. That makes this window completely stupid. Only good thing about the seats is that you can actually lift them up and have some storage area behind front seats. And now, when we are talking about storage areas, there are quite a few of them. But that is usual thing in this type of vehicle. So the practicality is on very high level, like it should be. Stereo system is basic, it isn't anything special, it's just okay, it supports Bluetooth connectivity and that's it. Climate controls and the air conditioning system is kind of a little bit confusing, but when you figure it out, it's okay. 
And now I'm going to explain all of the buttons in the car. Here are the standard window controls and this is the button to lock the windows. This first one is for very cold weather. When you start the car, press this button and it will bring the revs a bit up. Next one is for power operated mirrors and the last one is for adjusting headlights. An interesting thing here on steering wheel as you probably have noticed most of the buttons are not labeled and I thought the build quality was bad and this is a 10 year old car so the paint fell off. But then I started playing with them and I found out that if you don't choose a cruise control as an option instead of getting flat panel on steering wheel you get buttons for cruise control just unlabeled. This is a bit weird and unusual. Here in the middle we can select 4 wheel drive and 4 wheel drive with low range gears. Second button is for locking doors from inside and the last one is for rear differential lock for extreme situations. Now a few words about driving experience. Unfortunately my memory card got damaged and I have lost all driving footage from this and also my next review that I already filmed. So this will be a voiceover. In terms of city driving it is pretty hard because this car doesn't have a rear view camera or parking sensors. So try to avoid driving in the reverse. But this engine is surprisingly good. When you floor it it gives you a decent push in the back and I really like that. These 170 horses are ready for you whenever you want to play with them. So this car can offer you a lot of fun on the road and even more off the road. Driving position is great. Like in other large off-road vehicles, that feeling of driving this large truck is so satisfying and the power you have is just incredible. As you already know, these type of cars are made to work and help us in our jobs. But I just love how they switch their personality and in couple of moments become an awesome looking city cars. Jack it up! Oh, 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 oh,